that's not... Especially you, drummer boy. Where else do you think I was always picking on you? You've been screwing up everyone with your lousy beats since day one. The percussionist backs off, visibly cowed, as the rest of the ensemble looks at him angrily. Okay, I'll admit you guys suck slightly less than before. And you want to know why? It's because of that guy. I point at Hao, who cocks his head in confusion. I'd enjoy telling each of you how much you suck in excruciating detail. In case you haven't figured it out, that's because I'm not a very nice person. Hao doesn't do that. He doesn't tear you down, doesn't laugh in your face, doesn't pick on you for no good reason. He tells you to practice because he actually wants you to get better. Yeah. But then, he's only one guy. There's no way he can fix everything on his own. So the only way you guys are going to get better is if all of you do something about it. But all the hours of practice he assigns. It's impossible for people like us. I roll my eyes at this. Guys, come on. If it's possible for a total slacker like me to get their crap together, then anything's possible. The orchestra members look anxiously at one another. Then just when I think they're going to argue some more, they actually begin to laugh. This time, though, their laughter sounds much more cheerful and good-natured. Encouraged, I go on. Plus, how's treating everyone to dim sum this weekend if all the practices go well? Isn't that right, Hal? In all honesty, Hal probably doesn't understand what I've signed him up for, but he nods anyway. I don't think he'll mind, though, given how hopeful he looks when everybody cheers. See, I told you it wasn't so bad. Even Mr. Song never treated us before. Hmm, well, maybe he may be a demon robot ghost, but at least he's a friendly demon robot ghost. Heh, I knew they could be won over through their stomachs. As he looks around the now enthusiastic room, Hao's eyes meet mine. I flash him a brief smile and gesture to the people around us. Friends. Peng Yu. And there it is. The second time Hao's genuinely smiled for me. I think I could get used to this. Yeah. <laughs> Never thought I'd say this. But maybe I'm looking forward to the next two months after all. Yeah. Drawings are just adorable. The next few weeks pass in a dizzying blur of activity. I can't say everyone stops complaining about the hours of practice that Howe assigns, but as the concert draws closer, the growing sense of urgency motivates even the laziest slackers and gives everyone a deeper appreciation for Howe's rules. It also helps when I convince Howe to set more reasonable expectations. We end up axing the final song from the set list, for instance, so we can ensure the others are literally pitch perfect. So I'll, I'll get you next time, my awesome rock ballad medley. As long as there's no butterfly lovers, I'm willing to let you go for now. Yeah, I'm already thinking about it next time. I know it's weird. Not too long ago, I would have been happy to take my father's money and run. Now I'm daydreaming about how much of that money to spend on symphonic metal or Japanese soundtrack scores. The other thing I never admit is that I look forward not only to orchestra practices, but also to my nightly English-Chinese lessons with Hao. As I expected, Hao's a very strict teacher. He yells if I don't finish every page of homework he assigns and steals my snacks if I eat while he's talking. But he never laughs at my mistakes. I'm grateful for that. And to be fair, Hao never dishes out more than he expects back. He even scolds me for not giving him enough English homework. <laughs> <laughs> Unsurprisingly, his English improves a whole, a whole lot faster than my Chinese. He won't buy a Chinese English dictionary, though, claiming that the one he ordered online should be here any day now. After he'd been saying that for two weeks, I bought him one myself and threw it at his head. He ostensibly still refuses to use it, though I've caught him sneaking glances every now and then. The fact that we understand each other better helps, especially during practice. If Hal breaks into an impassioned outburst about the length of the fermata on the third page, or exactly what tempo he wants the for Allegro Vivace, at least he can relay the general points to the bewildered ensemble. After six weeks of trying to translate Hal's music rants, I think I'm more familiar with the scores than most of the musicians, even though I've never touched an instrument. I've even started hearing passages passages of Dvorak as the soundtrack to my dreams. 
Sona! Hey, Sona! I'm shaken from one of these dreams now by someone calling my name. I hide a yawn behind my hand. Guess those late night lessons with how have been more draining than I thought. I wasn't napping before practice, I was just resting my eyeballs. Oh, oh, well, I was wondering if I could make an announcement at the beginning of practice today. Um, if it's not too much of an interruption, that is. I'm really sorry for the inconvenience, but hopefully it won't take that long. The heck are you apologizing for? You think I give a crap about that kind of stuff? I guess the orchestra members have gotten used to my tough talking, because the girl just flashes me a grateful grin. Thanks, Sona. I'm so excited. I can't wait. If you're going to build it up like that, this had better be good. Once all the orchestra members have arrived, the girl makes her way to the front of the room. Great news, everyone. My brother works for the local newspaper, and he says that... And he says the head of the arts and entertainment section has heard how well our orchestra's been doing. They want to do a story on us. Really? Everyone immediately starts chattering excitedly. Oh my gosh, we're going to be famous. I've never been in the paper before. But isn't this going to give us even more pressure than before? Relax, we'll be great. No other orchestra in the country works as hard as we do. Jeez, you may be a lot better now, but you're still just a bunch of amateurs. Don't get so cocky. Still, I guess it's kind of nice to see everyone so excited. I glance over at Howe. While both his English and his opinion of the orchestra have improved a lot over the past few weeks, I'm not sure if he knows what's going on with everyone now. As far as I can tell, though, he seems pleased with their enthusiasm. Guess it's my job to bring things back down to earth. Okay, okay, that's enough chit-chatting. Yeah, I'll admit having a story in the paper would be kind of cool. But don't get ahead of yourselves. Who knows if the newspaper people will actually go through with all this. Oh, they definitely will. They're even willing to come to practice next week for the interview. They're going to interview us? Oh no, what should I say? Does my hair look okay? They're not- they're talking to us next week. Not right now, silly. Um, well, actually, they're not going to talk to all of us. They just want to talk to Sona. Huh? Why only me? Um, that's their angle for the article, actually. How our orchestra rose from the ashes after Mr. Song passed away thanks to the leadership of his daughter. <coughs> They're going for a touching, feel-good kind of story. Love from music and family triumphing over all obstacles, you know? I think it'll be very sweet. Sweet, huh? It sounds sweet, all right, so syrupy and saturine that it'd choke you on the way down. I want to spit out those sugar-coated lies and rinse the taste out of my mouth. So, um, if you don't mind having the reporters talk to you for a few minutes and take some photos during practice next week, I can tell my brother to don't bother. The excitement on everyone's faces finally is quickly replaced with shock. But why not? It's good publicity for our orchestra. I just texted all my friends about being in the paper. <laughs> you already did that, you fucker. Everyone will come once they hear our great comeback story. On the less materialistic side, guys, wouldn't this make a nice tribute for Mr. Song? I think he'd like everyone to see we kept going even after his death. Everyone murmurs and nods their agreement. That's it, isn't it? In the end, it's not about me or my orchestra. It's always going to be about my father. Meh, whatever. I don't feel like doing an interview, so quit bothering me about it. Any whiners are getting their instruments shoved straight up their you-know-whats. The percussionist and bassist look especially scared. <laughs> no one dares say another word about the interview again. Well, except for one person, that is. I'm straightening the music stands after practice when Howe taps me on the shoulder. He holds up an old newspaper and points at it excitedly. Sona, noose. Don't tell me you just figured out what we were talking about before. No, Howe. No news. No Sona and news. Too bad. No news? Newspaper? I know what you meant the first time. <sighs> just, Just don't talk to me right now. Silencio. How obviously doesn't get it, because he keeps following me around the room. As I'm moving a stack of scores to the back, he taps me on the shoulder again. <laughs> he looks flustered. When I turn around, he grudgingly hands me a half-empty bag of potato chips. <laughs> Are these the chips he confiscated last week? Because I was eating them during practice? Grimacing, I toss them in the trash. <laughs> like, fine, I'll give you these back. She tosses them in the trash. She's like, what the fuck? What the fuck?